Okay. Am I in? You look great. Yeah. Oh, we're both in. <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is Meg Donahue, the founder of Mama Says Foods. She's been on the show before, sometimes with her unbelievable mother, Millie, who has a famous chili named after her. She's here today to talk about food as medicine, but also to offer a $25 discount until the end of the month, until June 30th, 2023, on any bundle. So please welcome Meg back to the show. I haven't seen you in such a long time. I know. It is so good to see you. And thanks for mentioning my mom. She is still doing great. And she still always asks about you. So she's just so cute. Thing. I wish I'd love to meet her because she's adorable. She is really sweet. And she's 92. And she just got back from shopping. We, she doesn't drive anymore. But, but we have somebody drive for her and she goes shopping and and still does her thing. So we've got to get Millie back though. Cause she, I think, she, I mean, you know, it's so great. She's like really the face of the company. I mean, she's the reason the company was founded really. She's the inspiration and, you know, we're mission driven, as you know, and I don't know if your, your viewers know, but we really, our founding story is based on the just miraculous health transformation that my mom experienced. I mean, she was in hospice care and went from congestive heart failure, less than 10% heart function, um, to now, this was at 80, to now at 92, still going strong, and her heart function is normal, and, you know, she's still doing, she was up until, you know, the pandemic, driving a lot and swimming a lot, but she's still exercising and do, doing all those types of things, so, and it was all due to a switch in food. And she eats Mama Says. She eats mama says, because I still cook for her. She still lives here. And, um, you know, what, what happened? I don't know if you want me to tell that story, but I yeah, tell I it because, you know, people come yeah. to the, these, these shows at various times, they might not be familiar with you or, yeah. or, or Millie's it, story. So, so it was really miraculous of AJ. We, I, you know, grew up in new England and it's meat, potatoes, and cheese, you know, Vermont is cheese country. And so that's really the diet that we grew up on. And when my mom got sick, and this was um, almost 12 years ago, she um, was congestive heart failure. She was in the hospital, one of the top hospitals here in New England. And they just said, take her home. There's nothing more we can do and get end of life care for her. And so instead of doing that, I brought her home to live with me. I had just had a baby. I wanted her to be around or maybe meet her grandchild and you know, get to know her. Um, and we thought for like three months. And I started researching who has survived this level of heart failure. And I came across um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Esselstyn's work, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, T. Colin Campbell's. And I, I researched everything. And I just said, can this really be true? Can you really reverse a condition this serious? And I thought, even if we get a few more months, I'll be happy. And so, um, and I had always eaten. We had owned a large organic commercial bakery. So we were involved in organic movement and, and you know, one of the first uh, companies to start the USDA organic certified movement back in the 80s. And so we were really steeped in food, but this particular way of eating was not on my radar. And I just jumped into it and called Dr. Esselstyn, called, you know, all of these, the doctors and basically hounded them and then said, just followed what they said to do. And started feeding my mom and, and mind you, she couldn't feed herself. She couldn't get up and get, get to the, the bathroom. So she was, this was end of life care. And I started feeding her and anybody who has parents who are, or caregivers, they'll know that food is really overwhelming for people who are sick. And so I fed her these tiny little whole food plant-based meals. And I was like many people, I didn't know I was like, where is she going to get her protein? I mean, it was a real, should I make her an egg? You know, this is the stuff that was on my mind. I just didn't know. But we, and I researched it and I was like, wow, you can get a lot of protein and vegetables. Who knew? And I fed her this food. She gradually over a three, four month period started to get like the color back, which meant her lung capacity was increased and her, her heart function was getting slightly better. And over a course of, you know, it wasn't like, she ate it one week and then you're from that level of sickness, you're well, but over six months and to a year and then in the three year marks and we have these, the, her cardiology team at Dartmouth Hitchcock, we have the notes where they're going like, oh my goodness, you went from 10% to 25% heart function, from 25 to 45, what are you doing? 
And, you know, mom was, I'm vegan, <laughs> you know, she didn't, but she said, and then they were like, is this real? And, you know, there's always, you know, we are, we're very supportive of medicine and doing the absolute best you can to give your body the best chance, which is through food, we think, and lifestyle. And then if you need medicine on top of it, but they were amazed. And so she went from that level of illness to swimming three days a week. She started driving again. She ended up moving here from another state because we had renovated a little cottage and it just worked out great here on our property, um, meeting new friends. So at 80, 85, really starting her life again and having the energy to do it. And when she was close to 90, she fell and she broke a hip. She was, um, you know, trying to, she was just, it was just a, a quirky thing that happened. And in most cases at that level, uh, at that age, people, they don't rebound. And my niece called me and my niece happens to be a surgeon at the hospital that she was working at. And she said, you're not going to believe it, Aunt Meg. Her heart function is better now at 89 than it was at 85. And, you know, we tell those things and you hear them on Chef AJ, because you know, and, and probably folks in your audience hear it. But it feels like we're just making up stories because it is so profound, the impact that a significant change in food can have. And, and just to be really clear, she went from eating a pretty highly processed food, but one that would be normal. She was a normal weight. She was active. She, if you would look at her when she was in her 80s, she still played golf. But she was, so she wasn't overweight and didn't look like she was sick, but underneath all of it. Um, was a pretty highly processed diet, you know, heavy in, in meats every day and, and that type of thing. So we took all of that out and we just went whole food plant-based and that um, her recovery was, it blew me away and my own physical health, you know, I had all of these smaller, smaller issues, but significant that went away. And I just became an evangelist. I was telling everyone and cooking for everyone and, you know, my friend got cancer and I'm like, oh my God. And I'm, I went down there and I'm cooking for him. And I just realized that this is kind of difficult to do unless you have like a highly motivating life and death. And if you're a, and if you don't have a lot of support, it takes a lot of energy to do. And so what we looked for was a company that could do what we needed. And that was to do a whole food plant-based, no gluten, no oil, no processed sugars, and have a line of SOS free. And so I ordered from everybody, everybody in the space, and we could not find it. And so we, we said we had sold our company, our other company. Um, and so I was in a part of my life where I didn't think I would be jumping back into the food business, but we said we have to. This is to how are people suffering from these illnesses, whether it be obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart conditions, hypertension, anxiety, lack of sleep, all of these things that are foodborne illnesses, as Dr. Esselstyn and a lot of the other great doctors who went before us have said, how are they, how do they not know? And once they do know, why is it so difficult to change? And so those are the two things that we wanted to, to help. And so we just make flat out awesome, we call it plant-based food done right. It's that if you eat our food, it will deliver on the promise. And if you're going to bother to go SOS free and plant-based, you want it to do what it says it's going to do. And so that's what we, that's what our food is. We say, you know, there's no oil, no gluten, no processed sugars, no chemicals, no BS, no bad stuff. Um, and we started making products and it took us a while to find our fit. But what we realized, what people really want is that kind of center of your plate. Everyone can kind of put together a salad or make rice, but it's that center of your plate replacement hearty meal that people wanted. So that's what our products are. They really are to replace. They're the heavy lifting of all of your meals. And so you can just add, you can eat them as they are or add something to it. And um, every, every week I get an email from a customer or several where they have had some sort of profound health transformation. And, you know, it's, it's so fulfilling. And you know that um, any type of, when you're in business for yourself, you can have great days and days where it's more difficult. And those are always the sustaining. It's the stories that sustain us. And we've, um, you know, we've partnered with the American College of Lifestyle Medicine because we feel it's that important. Um, we've had 
really uh, pretty recently and, and very exciting, an insurance company in New Jersey, a big one, Blue Cross Blue Shield, that we're going to be doing some work with, and um, a lot of doctors in this space to partner with them to use our food for their for their um, their studies because it does exactly what it says it's going to do. And so that's how we got started. And um, I know, and you know, and you've been at this longer than me, you know, it's a big battle because there's so many messages and there's so much bad food and it's so confusing and overwhelming. Um, and we just said, we're just going to keep bunches of punches. We're just going to keep going, spread the message, spread the message, spread the message. And so I appreciate you having us on here to help do that. Yeah, my pleasure. It's been too long. Did, did you and mom change your diet right at the same time together? Uh, yeah, the whole, everybody, the whole family. <laughs> I was cooking. And so, and this was, you know, we, we just went all in because she was, it was, she was really sick. And I just said, if I'm going to do this, we're all going in. So I just went all in. And for me, I had been a competitive tennis player and I had arthritis in my hip and it was significant. And, um, Within, it was within like a month or two, it went away, you know, so I would, and, and one day I remember I was in bed and I, I woke up and I was like, what is that? What's going on? And I realized my back didn't hurt. And I, you know how you just, get, some people can get, just get used to the pain. And so you kind of just adjust and it was gone. And it, it literally kind of woke me up to be without pain. And the inflammation was the most dramatic for me. And so, and the more I researched it, you know, my dad died of Alzheimer's and heart disease, which is no surprise. Um, and so the more I researched it, the more I realized this is not just about me being able to get out of bed a little easier. This is about my brain health 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now. And so, you know, naturally I, my whole family, <laughs> that my immediate family, and then, you know, my sister who had, um, again, looked like the picture of health, but had stroke level hypertension. I said, you have to do this. You can't. And she just jumped in and she started and hers was a little bit more complicated. Her husband wasn't as interested in doing it. And so she just navigated that. And, and, you know, that's not unusual for a lot of people where they might be on board, but their family isn't. And how do you do that in a way that doesn't alienate people? Because food is so important. And there's so much around it. And we've really um, come up with some great strategies for people to do that. And I think the food that we make works well. Um, we don't shame people. We encourage. We suggest adding more, uh, you know, great veggies on your plate. And um, so, yeah, everyone in my family went plant-based. <laughs> and they've stayed that way. That's fantastic. I love that. You mentioned you were in the food business before doing Mama Says. Not doing Mama Says, we had a very large organic um, bakery, bread bakery. And so we had our own brands and we were the private label bakers for Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. And so we knew, and this is the key, uh, a key in food business, we knew, and it was organic bread, which was, you know, when we started, and it was really my partner, Lisa, who started it, a great American rags to riches story, you know, basically started it, absolutely grew up dirt poor. Um, started this as a, uh, a business selling things at a um, farmer's markets and grew it to, you know, a multi, multi-million dollar company um, because, you know, it's just, it was, it's been a phenomenal ride, but that particular um, company, we were the private label bakers for Whole Foods and Trader Joe's made a lot of the top brands. What um, kind of stuff, can I ask what kind of stuff you made? Breads, um, breads, English muffins, this type of thing. So um, not cookies, not that kind of bakery. So basically the breads um, had our own brands and had sold that in 2005. And so, and that was, um, you know, it was a, a wonderful, wonderful company, a, a part of the initial um, USDA organic certification. Um, and so it was, and when they said you can't make organic bread, that was, that was the line back then is you cannot make organic bread. It'll mold, it'll mold too fast. You're going to have... And so that was really the nut that we cracked then. And the same here with Mama Says, the same premise of you can't make foods without preservatives if you're going to be shipping them to people. And we, we worked for a good year with lab scientists and chefs to be able to formulate the food so that it sustains its freshness for two weeks unopened in your fridge. You can freeze it, 
but some you want thawing food is not always as awesome as just having a, something fresh that you pull from your fridge and can use it right then. And so that's what we wanted. We wanted people to have that option. And so that's how our food is formulated. And, and then also, and you know this, to get a taste profile that is uh, familiar and doesn't feel like it's lacking. You know, there's a lot of tricks that, you know, chefs can use um, when you're not using salt and, you know, processed sugar. And how do you do that? Because you want that nice rounded flavor in your, your recipes. And so we work really hard to do that as well. That's amazing. Can you show yeah. some of the food by any chance? I People can, love know, to see it. I have, we have this SOS free and it's a staple at our house and it's called, um, it's a, it's a ricotta bake. Um, it's an Italian style ricotta bake. So I'm going to show you that this is just it on a plate. Okay. So can you see, I don't know if you can see, it. I'm going to pull up my glasses. So this is just uh, on a plate and you can see it's like, really, this is, I didn't heat it up, but it's really yummy, delicious, hearty, but what we do is, the, and you can eat it like that, just heat it up and eat it. And it's just like, it's a mushroom style ricotta bake. It's just delicious. Or you can have it on like a bed of greens, which is something that we do. This is one of our most popular SOS free products because it is a workhorse. You can put it on if you have a cauliflower um, crust for a, a pizza and you want a pizza. This is just, it's like mouthwatering. So you can use it for that. We have people who send us pictures and they just show us this one woman. She, she made, um, you know, she did a batch cooking and she used our ricotta bake for like two weeks of things because it's, it's that versatile and that um, all of our products are, this one is just one of my personal favorites. And so we eat it a lot here. And I think the folks who are watching this would like it because anybody can eat it. So if you have folks in your house who aren't plant-based, um, that's fine. They're not going to say this is, oh, I, I can't eat that. You know, they can have it with whatever else they, they want, but have this nice hearty two, three servings of veggies in it. And you're just going to flood your body with nutrients and it balances out some of the other things. And so that's kind of what our food looks like. It all comes in multi serving. So this is one serving and you get three per packet, three to four per packet. Um, as with all of our other products, um, you know, we have a marinara sauce, we have these great organic tortillas. I think I sent you some of those are our fresh tortilla organic oh, yeah. tortillas well, that came out. That are your delicious. marinara sauce is fantastic. And yeah, I see yeah, that that's marinara. what's on that. Yep, exactly. And it's all SOS free. We have an SOS free chili. And we've started to move a lot of our products to SOS free. There are some people who still want, everything's low sodium. So nothing that we have is high sodium. But there, the SOS free just seems to be a sweet spot for a lot of, of people these days, especially if you have health conditions, because salt, um, that was something that we did with my mom too. I was a, I was maniacal about sodium with her because her heart was, was so damaged. And we just, I, I, like, she was SOS free. I forgot to mention that she was whole food plant-based, but she was SOS free from the start. And um, stayed that way, I think, for three to four years. And she's very low sodium to SOS free now. I mean, every once in a while, my brothers might take her out for lunch or something. And, you you know, you're going to get some there. But I would say 95% of the time, she's SOS free. And um, it has such a profound impact on her health. Well, you know, Mona says that she bought, Mama says, some time ago before going SOS free, but didn't like it because of the no salt. And she's saying maybe she should try it again now that she's eating clean, <laughs> SOS free. You know, it's true. And I, it, I didn't realize how uh, saturated our taste buds had become with oil, fat, and salt. And when um, we like two weeks in, and we tell people two weeks to three weeks in, just to be reasonable. You know, my taste buds, I felt like they exploded. I, you know, ate a radish and I felt like, oh my God, these are amazing. Um, because they just woke up and your taste buds do change as we know. Um, and it is getting through that initial time to have the information and support that things, things might taste different. They're gonna taste amazing. And you're gonna feel amazing and allow yourself that time to change. Yeah, Jennifer said she heard about Mama Says It True North. And Mary Jo would like to know, what are your most popular meals? Um, well, the ricotta bake is one. 
uh, super popular. Our Millie's chili is really popular. We have a garlic ginger strips that are, and they have, they're low sodium. So they're not SOS free and a tuna ish. Um, but we're moving our tuna ish to an SOS free as well. And that one, it's so versatile and so easy. And it has even a little B12 because we use, we, we partner with a kelp company off the coast of Maine, um, which is such a cool thing to be able to do. And kelp has a little B12 in it. Um, so those are really popular. Uh, let's see, what else do people love? The burgers, of course, uh, we have a sausage and these are all whole food plant-based. There's no, um, no preservatives. Um, the lazy lasagna is super, super awesome. Moroccan stew. You know, we have a real variety and we've tried the products that we have are the products that people love. I will say that because we, as a food company, you can't afford to keep things that are, aren't selling, basically. And so it's a really almost instant feedback. If you have something out there that people aren't um, loving, they don't buy it. Oh, another one. This is a new product. It's called a veggie helper and it's SOS free. And we got it from uh, this Mayan restaurant here in Brattleboro that had made this like delicious vegan um meal. And we're like, what is this? And we got kind of the recipe together. And then basically what it is, is a mix that you can add to veggies that you can add to, um, you know, noodles, you can put it in a, uh, a wrap that is delicious, has enough protein, like people like to have a little extra protein. I don't like to talk too much about that. But this has a little bit more than our others. And it just makes making any meal super easy, super, you know, any kind of extras that you have into a meal. So if you have rice, you add the veggie helper and it's very hearty. It's very yummy. So that's another good product. What's it, what's it primarily made of? You know, I was just, gonna, I'm going to pull up the, pull up those, um, the uh, ingredients for you because it's just so. It yummy. sounds great. Yeah, it's really good. Um, and people just love it. So you give me a second and I can answer another question question if you want while I do this. So it's so funny. I should I I worked on this forever. There we go. And I have a question from one of the viewers who wants to know how often you change the meals. Can you pick and choose or do you have to eat the same thing in the bundle over and over? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we have curated bundles like the Chef AJ bundle um, that has specific products that we worked with you to put together in there. And it comes with suggested meal plans. And so, and we have, you know, uh, uh, athletes bundle and things like that. Most about 50% of our customers though, are people who, who want to pick their own meals. And so you can do that as well. You can build, build your own bundle, build your own box. And so you can go through all of our products and just put in what you want for that box and it has to fit in the box. Um, and then, and so you can choose your own or you can get one that we've kind of curated. If this is your intent, like we work with the folks at Mastering Diabetes and so we have a curated bundle for them. And if this is your intent, then this is probably the bundle that, this is the bundle that you wanna get. And so you can do it either way. And I can, let me give you, and we do cycle in new products like the Veggie Helper is a new one. We don't do it every week. We probably have a new product every seasonally for sure. We have new soups and things like that come out. Um, but usually we cycle one, a product out and then a new one in. So if we have a product that isn't per performing as well, people don't like it as well, then we'll add a different product in. And because the, the idea of the company is that we're your staples. Like we're, we're the things you're going to want in your fridge all the time because each product can make 10 or 15, 30 different things. We even have what we call a meal o -matic, um, which is on our website where you can put in the meal that you got, like say veggie helper, and it will give you five or six different ways to make it. And so besides just eating it right out of the, the bag, which you can do that too. So, and then the veggie helper, I was just going to let you know. Um, so tomatoes, pumpkin seeds, sweet onions, uh, celery, carrots, um, we make our own date syrup. Mama says makes we make all of our own date syrup and all our own veggie broths, so we don't get anything extra. Um, garlic, some spice, red pepper flakes. Um, but it is the pumpkin seeds that I think that are the magic in that particular dish. 
And so you just, how, how do you use it, for example? Yeah, so if, if you had some some noodles that you, you know, maybe some rice noodles that you had made, you could use it with, use it like what would be a meat replacement, say, or that, and a little bit of sauce. Um, you could use it on a tortilla and then wrap it up with a few more veggies on top of it. It's really hearty. So it comes like a, almost like, um, it, you know, like a, like a, like a hamburger stir fry. That's like the, what it, the consistency of that. Um, I'm trying to find a veggie equivalent to that, but everyone kind of might be familiar with that. So it's a very, it's like a thick paste, not paste, but stir fry. And then you just add it to whatever else you want to make an actual meal of. So if you had a broccoli and some snow peas, add some of the veggie helper and you have this really yummy meal. Um, it's that versatile. And because we found a missing piece uh, for folks is they just wanted something that could add a little extra nutritional value to uh, a, a stir fry or dishes where you know, maybe a few extra calories for some people where they were fi finding that they were not getting enough calories and they were losing energy, not so much losing weight, but more of their energy wasn't up. That sounds really good. It's really cool. I, I will send you some. I can't that believe it. sounds I'm... like a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this. What advice do you have for like people that are trying to start their own plant-based food business based on your experience and what you've learned? Sure. You know, I'm definitely encouraging. And, you know, we we have so much work to do. And there's so many big bad food companies that if we can have more plant-based ones, that is um, that is a really good thing. And so if you have never been in business before, and even if you have, one of the things that we really strongly recommend, this is a practical piece, is to get an advisory board. And this means that you surround yourself with people and usually you pay them, it might be in food in the first year or two, um, to help you fill the, the holes in your knowledge with their experience. And so that you create the plan with minds that aren't, aren't have your best interest in mind, but aren't kind of that emotionally invested that can lead to sometimes not great decision-making <laughs> and to really lean into them. And what we found is that having that kind of outside resources expands your network by tenfold right away. Um, and so that if you run into a problem that might be stumping you, you have this great wealth of people who are interested in what you're doing and wanting you to, to, to um, succeed. So that's different than a, a board, you know, a regular um, company board, if that's the type of company that you're creating. But this is an advisory board. So these are people who, who might be in a, particularly you want finance, you know, people who understand finance, people who understand logistics, people who understand the nuts and bolts of the business. And, um, you know, and then the marketing piece as well. It's that, that kind of nuts and bolts. How does this thing work? How do you read your financial statements to understand your numbers, understand, you know, what's profitable, what isn't, what it, it, it does. It's not super complicated, but it, there's a tendency, I think, at least being an entrepreneur most of my life to hide from that kind of, because you just want to go. But to really, and you know, Lisa, my co-founder, even wrote a book um, about a values building values-based businesses, and it's to own your numbers, to understand what your numbers are and what you need to do to get to each next level, um, and to be realistic. You know, keep your passion, but keep your realism. Um, and you know, for for us, one of the things. I will never tell an entrepreneur you need to have a balanced life. It's just don't expect it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not. You're not. But, and I, I don't know as I want that, you know, for me, a balance is full engagement, you know, whether I'm with my kids or working or playing tennis or resting, but to be fully engaged and to know that there's going to be times when, okay, I just need to work more this week. And that's how it is. And to accept that and not get too caught up in it. Um, you know, no, keep your friends close, keep your good friends close. You know, these are, um, just kind of like the wisdom of a lot of years in it, the people who you can say, I'm just having a hard day. I'm at about a 10, you know, can you fill me in with the other 90%? I need some support here, um, who can help you. 
you know, and your sense of humor, keep a sense of humor, you know, it's don't take yourself too seriously, take what you do seriously, not yourself, you know, those are the things and, you know, personally, what we do, because the pandemic, I will say was a very difficult time to be in business, it was very hard, we had, and we were in a food business where you needed to be in in your, you know, in a space close with people. We, luckily, our kitchen was probably the safest place to be during a pandemic because it is, we have a, you have to eat, go through an entire clean room even to get into our kitchen. You have to be fully, you know, there, there is, you have to be, it looks like a surgical suite. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very intense. So it's very clean um, and everyone washes their hand, you know, everyone's gloved, masked, hat, white coat, stuff on their feet. So there's nothing that's coming in there. Um, but it was still very intense. You know, we didn't know what customers were going to do. Prices were going up and, you know, our shipping costs went up and, uh, we were scared just personally, everybody was, or at, at the least uh, uneasy. Um, and so, you know, during those times, you want to have some practices that will keep you grounded. And so for us, you know, one of the things that we've done is meditate and we just, it's, we bake it into our day because we found it's as important to enter my day with a quiet mind as it is to have 10 things knocked off my, my list because I'm more efficient, I'm more effective, and I like my life better. <laughs> so that's, um, you know, that's, that's my, my little bit of advice. And, you know, our um, co-founder, Lisa, uh, Lorimer, and there's also my partner, she's done a lot of consulting with other companies. She's highly sought after for that because she has such uh, a keen mind at being able to see structural uh, problems and, and how to help people succeed. And, and that's really, you know, as a company, what we've always tried to do. Thank you. Mona says for the a la carte, how do you do that? Do you still have to choose a bundle or can you just choose some items? Yep. Um, that might be, that, that's a really good question because it can sound a little confusing. We um, think of a bundle as just box. And so we have to ship our things in a specific size box and only so many products can fit in one box. And so we ask um, just for ease, we have, you can get a small box or a big box and you can fill those with whatever items you want. And so that's basically what you're getting. I want a small box of things or I want a big box of things but you pick the things that go in the box. She wants to know, can she still get the discount on items or does it have to be a bundle? Oh, um, we only price it by the bundle. And so each, yeah, each, each bundle is, each product is not um, priced per se. You know, it doesn't have a, a price tag on each product. It's just a value, you know, like the main dishes are a little bit you know, you can have X many main dishes, X many sides, X many desserts or things like that. So each one is a different value, but the bundles are all the same. So it's super simple. Nice. No it, math. How old were your kids? <laughs> how old were your kids when you switched the diet? My daughter was, was newly born. And oh. yeah, I know I had a daughter. My da I had my daughter when I was 49. And no so, way. yeah, so it was quite, and then, yeah, when my mom, it was incredible. So you don't even look 49. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. Well, oh my it was quite a while ago. And then I adopted my son uh, when he's 15 now. And I adopted him um, during the pandemic. We were in the process of adoption. Um, he had been in foster care. And we said, this is, it's either us or, you know, there's no more, no more shuffling around. So we adopted him during the pandemic. Um, but he had been with us for three years prior. And so I have an 11 and a 15 year old and, and they're great. And, you know, they are, I would say they are 90% plant-based and it's a really, it's a really interesting, um, uh, I don't know if it's a problem, but it's, 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 it, it kind of is. Yeah. It's a, it, a, a conundrum because I'm really aware of food issues for girls and, and even more young boys and how a hyper focus on food can cause problems. And I'm also aware that how processed food is key in causing those problems. And so I educate them and they know, and I educate them. And we cook vegan food here, you know, primarily mama says, cause it's so darn easy and I'm really busy. 
Um, but I know that when they go to a friend's house or when they do some other things, I don't set a hard rule for them and they make their own decisions around things and they're really good. They're super healthy and, you know, they love our food. They eat our food. So that's a good thing. That's fantastic. Talk about creating community and the importance of building a supportive community around plant-based living and how you do that with Mama Says. Yeah. You know, the pandemic was an interesting opportunity to do that. We got involved in this um, program called Everyone Eats. We've always donated food to the community. Every month we donate um, a couple thousand meals to different um, food hubs here, which is neat because people are in the most need are getting the best food. And it's not usually that isn't the equation. A lot of times people in the most need are getting the worst food. Uh, did you just freeze? Oh, no, don't freeze on me. You we were really familiar this one called Everyone Eats. Um, I don't think, yeah. It just, you just froze for a quick second, yeah. Oh, okay. We, we were really instrumental in this program con called Everyone Eats, which was, it was on the Today Show. It was a really cool thing where um, we did all of the logistics of getting food um, from restaurant, restaurants made food, and then we brought it to distribution places. And Mama Says Food was a big part of it for people who were food um, insecure. So basically people who did not have a lot of food. And Chef AJ, I live in a small town, 13,000 people. The first day that we distributed and we distributed thousands of Mama Says meals, there, were, there was a line of cars like a mile and a half long and it was people were living so close to the edge. And so what we did is we just, we kept on doing that almost for two years. This is like a side business. Um, we ran our vans, our people, we did all of the logistics to keep the food safe. And then a part of Mama Says Food was a part of it. And each time that we did that, it's an opportunity to talk about the importance of eating well, of sharing food, because nobody wants to be lectured to, but the idea of sharing food in an uplifting, non-shaming way. And so that was important to us. Other ways, um, you know, we have a, a Facebook community that is, and I'm, I'm mixed reviews. I, I'm, I feel mixed a little bit about Facebook and community. I'm not sure how strong it is, but we talk a lot about problems, how to overcome them, you know, and that sharing of uh, experiences. And the other thing is a company that we do is our customer service, and which sounds weird, right? But one of the things that I've noticed is that people want to talk about what's going on. And so that's what we've started to do is to just be able to be able to be there and um, help people as much as we can on the phone, as opposed to email on one-on-one, -on -one. like, so let them talk, so. Nice. Are there any innovations in vegan cuisine that you know about? You know, there's so much going on with cell-based foods and, you know, at a, a, um, a more technology level. And <clears throat> part of me loves that we're finding new ways to create food that isn't animal-based. And it's probably, a, you know, a, not a big difference in health wise from non-animal based products, but maybe a little bit better for you. And so those are the innovations that I keep on, I keep an eye on because, you know, like um, Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, new types of meats that they're creating out of, out of different technology. Um, and the other is the other end of the spectrum are companies more like ours that are trying to stay as pure to, you know, real food grown from the ground and it's it's kind of appalling that that's innovative, <laughs> but but it has become innovative to actually have food that you can sell at a retail um, that is un unadulterated, adulterated, you know, so that nothing has happened to it and it's packaged. And so on those two ends, we have those two ends. And so we're we're on the the other one. We we're starting a retail line next month. So that's that's kind of fun. Um, what, what does that really what does that mean a retail line like oh, it will be in stores sorry, yeah so we'll be in stores yeah so we'll be in stores here in new england um with with five of our products veggie helper being one of them um our tuna ish our chicken salad our, our ginger strips and our um veggie helper um 
And that way people can, can see, and we're gonna be in the produce section. So that's cool. <laughs> um, so right next to your actual live produce is this great, um, great food. So those are, you know, those are some of the innovations. More and more people are getting it. You know, it doesn't feel it when you just listen to kind of the mass media, but more and more companies are understanding and investing in different ways to eat that, that don't destroy the planet. And I hope that those will become ways that also don't destroy the most important animal on the planet, which is the humans, you know, that we can't do you freeze. Can you hear me? Yeah, you, you just, um, you were just lagging for a minute there. Okay. So, yeah, but you, you came back. So Wolf Dream said about two years ago, I was at a pride festival in Vermont and there was a food truck with Mama Says Food and it was fantastic. Oh, awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. we've done, we, we stopped after the pandemic, um, but we used to do um, a lot of festivals, a lot of um, different, you know, plant-based vegan festivals pride festivals. So there's well, a thank question. you. What does value one or value three mean under the product? Ask Connie. Okay. Um, that is the, <clears throat> we call them, we call them beat, beat values. So think of it as a way of, of pricing. So instead of having a price tag, it's one beat is less, less value, two beats, more value, three beats, the most value. And so most of our main products, because they're heavier and more to them are three beats. And so you get, you'll see that it tallies up how many beats you can put in a box. It's like a little game. And when you reach your limit, it will tell you you've reached your limit. And, you know, so you can put in four ricotta bakes, two scallop potatoes, one breakfast bar or two, however many, and it will add up the beats for you. And you get so many beats per box. And that's mostly so that we can, we don't overfill a box because then food explodes and it's just messy. Um, and we can keep a consistent weight for shipping products. That's cool. I saw another question. Um, if you're not home when it arrives, what happens? Is it a cold pack? Is it sent? How is it sent? Yeah, we have, it, it arrives in a, um, a cold pack and with ice on it, not dry ice, regular ice in this great liner and in a box. And we have a three-day cold chain. And so we'll get to your house on day two of that three-day cold chain. So you have a full other day if you didn't pick up the food that it's still going to be fine. And so you don't have to be home. And um, when you do get home, hopefully within the next day, you'll it, it's going to be fine. And we also, and this is important, I, I don't think I mentioned it, but when we first started doing this, I and I ordered from all these companies, we noticed that there was so much trash. There was just like these boxes and ice packs and liners. <clears throat> so I said, we cannot do that. We can't just be adding to a landfill, um, you know, it, not, not in keeping with the amount that you're eating. So we send every customer a prepaid shipping label and sh shipping tape, and you can send the whole box all your trash, your ice pack, your liner back to us. And it goes to, we have a separate um, recycling facility and we recycle and reuse everything. Recycle and or reuse everything. That's fantastic. So your products will only be in stores in New England then? In, in New England for now. And, um, you know, we just, and that's a part of the advice that we've always followed is you start small, you know, start and because I'm, um, in, in any kind of like new endeavor in your businesses that back to that question is you start with kind of a measured approach of does this work? Cause it's much easier to adjust it with smaller numbers than bigger numbers. Um, so if you're making a mistake, you, you don't want to make it with a ton of money. You want to make it with a little bit. So this is our, our testing. What are the names of the stores? If anybody lives in new England, um, most of the co-ops you'll find it in. And so, and particularly in Vermont and New Hampshire, and then we'll branch out to, to Maine, but uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts are big co-op areas. And so that's when you'll begin to see them in there. And then some of the smaller private stores as well. 
That's cool. Mona says she's picking her choices now. And if you order on or before June 30th of 2023, using the code that I've been posting in the chat in the show notes, you will get a $25 discount. All right. You know, somebody's asking uh, for buns for carrot dogs or veggie burgers. Do you know of any? Do you make any? We don't make any. The only thing that's close to that is our our tortillas, which are, um, you know, you can use it for a veggie burger. I myself use Ezekiel bread. That's um, where I land and have found that to be, you know, good. Um, or the best probably commercial product that you could, I could find. Um, so I have a gluten allergy. And so that's really been helpful. Um, oh, you can get Ezekiel without gluten. I wasn't yeah. aware. Yeah. So oh, I did not know that. And all of our products are gluten-free. And so that's, um, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. <clears throat> That is amazing. Well, this has been so fun catching up with you. Uh, that that new thing you showed looked beautiful. You could show oh, it so again yeah, if you want. Let me show it again. And just so you can kind of see the inside, it is, it's just, and it's, I've been smelling it because I heated this one up, but you can see it's just like yum, yum, yum. Really that kind of great mouth feel that you'd get from a ricotta bake and a cheesy feel, taste. Um, and it's delicious. And the other thing that we did, Chef AJ, is <clears throat> I have my brothers were football players, you know, growing up. And so they have that kind of mentality. And I we ran all of our recipes by them because I what I wanted is regular people to like our food and not sit, think that they're eating. Oh, now I'm eating vegan food. Um, I wanted regular people to say this is delicious and did not have it be, you know, just to normalize people eat vegetables all the time. I don't know why it's troublesome, but um, just to really normalize it. And so it's very hearty fair. And I think the taste profile will be familiar to most people. What do you do for Thanksgiving? Do you use Mama Says too? We do, we That's do. Cool. And it's pretty cool. I actually go to my brothers and our whole family gathers there from the tri-state area and we bring all of the vegan dishes. And so, um, and, you know, surprisingly, and I bet other people find this, they are the first to go. Everyone wants to try them. Everyone wants to eat them. And so that's the first to go. And so that's what, that's what we bring. Any new uh, offerings on the horizon? You know, I think we're going to be moving into, we have, and these aren't SOS free, but I think we're going to start moving it. We have two new, a new cookie. It's a chocolate, uh, a chocolate dream cookie and they're whole food plant. The only thing they are is they have a tiny bit of sodium in them. Um, so we're kind of going to be moving into some desserts that are SOS free that are satisfying. And this is what people say about our cookies. They're satisfying, but they don't set up a craving. And that's what we want where you, you have it and you're like, oh, that's nice. That's really, you know, but it doesn't set up that kind of craving of I need to now eat 10 more that a lot of processed sugars. So that's the, that's the area I want to go and snacks, crunchy snacks. And so that are you know yummy and do that same thing satisfying but don't set up the craving so those are the ah that, that's that's very interesting i'd love to yeah. know what those items are fantastic all right cool i will so will, just justine you know. says i'm from maine but i'm not or ma is maybe that's massachusetts sorry i i didn't have fourth grade so i don't have geography so i don't <laughs> know any of the state abbreviations other than probably california and she said i'm not familiar with co-ops can you explain Oh, yeah. Um, so a co-op is an, a, a store that is employee owned as well. And they started, I think, around in the 70s, and they were kind of the natural food, um, like the first natural food stores. And they've grown considerably. So they're just now what um, they're kind of like a smaller whole food store, but they're employee owned. And so they have um, employee shares. So people who work there can also be part owners of it and um, just a slightly different um, business model or quite a bit different business model, but it is like walking into a Whole Foods store. It's just smaller. Very cool. Mona, I don't understand your question. Is the ricotta mushroom tomato bake she showed, it doesn't seem like it's a complete sentence. Is it what? Is it, it is SOS free, if that's the question. Ah, okay. Maybe, maybe that was, that's yeah. good. Okay. If, if it is, it is. And Ruth, who I believe is the Ruth that's okay. I'm so excited. It's very hard to find salt-free food in Maine and New Hampshire. 
Oh, great. Where, nice. do you Where does Ruth live? Does she live in Maine? Where do you live, Ruth? Well, you know, I don't, I don't get an immediate answer. Don't get show. an immediate answer when you do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the recipe she showed? Yes, Mona, that was the ricotta mushroom tomato bake. Yes, it, it is SOS free, and that's so what she showed. To do it comes out of you don't have to do anything. It comes all made. The only thing I so it comes in a it comes actually in a tray, and it'll look like this. You just heat it up, and what we do so you can eat it like that. Or you can add, I just put some greens under this, or you can put it on a pizza crust or, you know, add it to noodles. It's just delicious. Um, or uh, over rice, that's another way, or quinoa that we, we have it. And so, but they all come ready-made. You just heat and eat. It's super easy. Three to five minutes and you're good to go. Great. Well, thank you, Meg. And thanks for offering a discount for you. another couple of weeks. You. Well, we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks so much. And thank you, oh, everyone. For thank you for making delicious food. And, you know, people, if, you know, I always tell people, like, you can send it to another destination. So, like, it's a great gift for people that just had a baby or that are getting out of the hospital or you're traveling mm -hmm. and you're worried you're not going to be able to get healthy food. So even if you're not somebody that regularly needs it because maybe you make your own healthy food, think about these other um, reasons you might want to get it. That is such a good point. A lot of folks send it to their parents um, and all of the things you mentioned. So that is, that's great. Yeah, great baby gift, wouldn't it? Or get out of yeah, the Yeah, exactly. Again. Makes life Absolutely. easy for mom. Absolutely. Right. Well, thanks so much. Please say hi to Millie. I hope we I can see do. her again soon. She's always welcome back on the show. And thanks oh. all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 9 a.m. tomorrow for Dr. Anne Pitier. She is a vegan radiation oncologist and will talk to you about what you need to eat to beat cancer.